What is it? Eleanor Glynn discovered it. Some players have risen to stardom because of it. Equally talented ones have failed through lack of it. By Dorothy Spensley. Photoplay. February 1926. It. It used to be such a meek and dignified little word that the tongue would slip easily over without even causing a tremor when it was uttered. And in your school days, when you played tag, it was the tagger, and you ran not to be it. It is different in this day and age. Now you run to get it. What is this quivering, pulsating, throbbing, beating, palpitating it? Undeniably, it is a product of this decade. Indeed, you might say it is a product of this hour, but what is it? It dripped from the pen of a writer of glowing words, glowing deeds, and glowing acts. And as it dripped, it spread until everyone in the world knew that it had suffered a rebirth. If you have it, the world is your peanut to crack and digest at your leisure. It is the open sesame to success in life and love. The peculiar thing about it is that no doctor can place a thermometer in your mouth and his fingers upon your pulse and, after a grave moment, say, You have 98.9 degrees of it. It is not located that way. You radiate it. It is a sort of invisible aura that surrounds your being and bathes you in its effulgence. Is it personality? Magnetism? Hypnotism? Sex appeal? Oh, hackneyed term. Fascination? Charm? What is it? You will find it in actors, directors, and writers. It will blossom among coal miners, truck drivers, and booksellers. It is not restricted to class or creed. It is not dependent on beauty of face or form, wealth or degree of station. But what is it? The woman who should know the most in the world about it is Eleanor Glynn. It was she who transformed this unobtrusive pronoun into a world-disgust noun. Madame Glynn, as you will recall, is the lady who introduced the tiger skin into fiction. And the tiger skin was apparent in this interview. In fact, we sat on one, and Madame Glynn sat, not reclined, mind you, on the other. Tell me, Madame, of it, we queried, for the benefit of the world at large, and Hollywood in particular. What is it? Madame's eyes narrowed to an amazingly small glint, and without the sibilant hiss that should novelishly accompany such a penetrating glance, said, It is the peculiar fascination possessed by men, much oftener than women, which makes them immensely attractive to all women and even to men. It is largely to do with animal magnetism. The person who possesses it is always utterly unselfconscious and perfectly indifferent and unaware of anyone's interest in him. The moment self-consciousness enters into the affair, it departs. It is a purely virile quality. It is never possessed by cold people or mushy sweet fellows. If a man has it while he is a boy, his mother forgives him for all his faults. His employers are always lenient, and women always make excuses for him. He has but to throw the handkerchief and he can attract any of them. People with it are always strong characters. The only male actors on the screen that I could describe as having it are John Gilbert, he has superlative it, he exactly epitomizes what I mean by it, and Douglas Fairbanks. I know of no others that I could speak wholeheartedly as possessing that quality, although there are several actors, not so well known, who at present I could say possess it. Some cases can be developed. I see enormous possibilities for Edmund Lowe when he has a suitable part but I have not yet seen him in a suitable role. Among the women, I have seen only two, Gloria Swanson and Vilma Benke. There are hundreds of interesting and talented people, hundreds of charming, fascinating girls, hundreds of handsome, delightful actors, but it is one of the rarest gifts in the world. It has become an absolute joke the way in which, for advertising purposes, this it has been tacked on to all sorts of actors and actresses, many of whom I have never seen. Madame Glynn paused. We descended from planing and rose-tinted clouds. So that is it. Just a moment before you go. It was Madame. I have forgotten one of the greatest possessors of it. Rex, king of wild horses. What a pity Pan is not visible. We are sure Madame Glynn would have glimpsed it in that pagan god. Jack Gilbert was in his dressing room, 
Velveteen breaches and turbulent black locks. Two minutes and he would be called to the Lebohim set. As the film's greatest exponent of it, Mr. Gilbert, we are here to beg your definition of the term. Oh, great, Pete, gasped Jack, squinting one itish eye at himself in the mirror and applying a pad of powder to his left cheekbone. It was a tense moment. Why, I think it is personality. It isn't necessarily beauty, for Will Rogers, certainly not in the handsome class, has more of that sparkle called it than any twelve leading men boiled down together. It is like a lamp that glows and glows and glows. It can't be dimmed by years. It is ageless. Yes, I would say that it is personality, and sex appeal too. It, you're wanted on the set, Mr. Gilbert, interrupted a young hopeful. So it is that. Next on our list was Norma Shearer. It commented her into the starry film firmament almost overnight. Norma was gowned in the latest from Oshkosh. Lyle stockings, school teacherish walking shoes, ill-fitting suits, and most impossible hat. But in spite of her outlandish garb, necessitated by her latest picture, a glimmering of that intangible quality radiated in her eyes. What is it? Norma blinked and thought. Just a moment, I will have to ponder on that. I think Madame Glynn's it is a magnetic force, partly physical and partly mental. People that possess this quality, to my way of thinking, need not necessarily be beautiful or handsome, but are usually electric, having a great force of life or vitality. By this, they make us conscious of their presence. They attract our attention when they enter a room. They dominate. That's the sheerer it. Now comes Cecil B. DeMille, creator extraordinary of films reeking with it. Another pelt-laden room, this. Quite different from the Glen abode, and more like an ancient hunting lodge. Across a broad expanse of desk sat DeMille, arms folded on the shining edge, eyes piercing the space. You ask what it is? Could the radio be explained in a few words? Could the gradual unfoldment of life on this great planet be recorded in a brief paragraph? Then how could it be interpreted on a single page? It is what makes the world go around. It is life itself. Yes, Mr. DeMille, said we. Thus the DeMille it. It assumes mighty proportions. Pola Negri is reputed to have a vast quantity of the precious quality. Poland's greatest actress was discovered in her dressing room. Eat? It is a magnetic personality, the strong individual qualities of a man or woman that attract other people to them. It does not require beauty, wealth, or necessarily great talent. It is sufficient in itself. You have the Negri definition. It was a somber paneled room. A handsome man with neat black mustache paced the floor. George Fitzmaurice, who has more pulsating pictures and fervid films to his credit than America has beauty contests, was talking. Fitzmaurice is of Irish parentage, but French birth and rearing flavor his life. The French have a phrase that is applicable to that indefinable something. It is je ne sais quoi, I don't know what. As I have said, it is that indefinable something that makes one woman, or man, more attractive than another. You cannot say that this actress has it, or that actress has it. Some may say that Lillian Gish has it, others that Nita Naldi has it, and more than likely the person who glimpses it in Lillian Gish cannot see the same quality in Nita Naldi. It is a matter of mentality and personal ideals. It is je ne sais quoi. Dashing across the United lot, we caught a glimpse of Rudolph Valentino, resplendent in a furry Russian uniform. Oh, high and mighty eagle, what is it? The figure wheeled on its military heel. The eyes, known for their slumberous allure, looked query. You ask me to define it? I confess I am a bit confused as to the meaning of the term. One day, I read an advertisement quoting Eleanor Glynn as saying that Rex, the equinine actor, has it. I read a magazine article the following day about a beautiful actress saying that she has it. Now just what these two have in common, I don't know. It's beyond me. We wonder. Paul Byrne is next to be consulted. Byrne, as you are aware, knows more about women and kindred subjects than does Kipling's well-known character. 
we found him in his little office at the Metro Goldwyn Mayer studio. He ruminated upon our query, and then spoke, weightily. Aside from that elucidation forbidden by the postal regulations, the shorter and uglier it has come to mean sex attraction. Not the decadence of the abnormal, but that healthy, vital, happy power which, with charm of personality and physical attractiveness, is the great quality we like to draw to ourselves and to leave as our heritage. Thus spake Mr. Byrne. Now that the long quest is ended, it is about time to make a brief survey of the answers. What is it? Is it fascination, animal magnetism, personality, magnetic force, life itself, magnetic personality, mental ideals, sex attraction? It is none of these things, for it is all of them. It is it.